Hello everyone and welcome back to Compete League Open League European Finals. My name is Chase Pathology Patterson and I am joined by Jesper Benvarmer and Kunz. Ben, what a game three. Like, I, I just... <laughs> we were over a kill per minute for one side of the map. That, that is unheard of. Well, I was down with the game three. I loved that game because it was so interesting. It was really, really nice to see the composition that dynamic dudes were able to come out with. Um, and it was very interesting to see how Phantom of Justice played that game as well because he went for his misfortune again. And that has now lost, el uh, eliminated two games, I'd say. Yeah, we've seen him prioritize caster, um, you know, caster champions pretty much the entire, I mean, almost the entire game, um, you know, relying twice on that, on that uh, MF and once on an Ezreal, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, have I got, I believe it was Ezreal, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it uh, Caitlyn? I'm sorry, no, 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 it was, uh, yeah, you're right. So we've seen, we've seen him prioritize the the MF twice now, and it just hasn't worked out for him. So we're hoping to see him come out on something a little bit different. Uh, the teams are just getting set up here in the in the lobby, and uh, we'll be uh, ready to get into the pick and pick and ban phase uh, very soon. Um, I think what we need to note first and foremost is the the Rex I pick has been pretty consistent for Ruffy, so they're probably going to be looking to get that pick going happening as well once more um is that potentially a ban that's going to come out to try and put him off kilter or would you see bans going elsewhere i know you mentioned the fizz, earlier. You mentioned the fizz before the break it's hard because you know ralphie yes he has been playing that rex eye all the time but i don't feel like he has been um the, the biggest part of the success for dynamic dudes um and even if you ban it away, it's it's not even his most played champion. There is uh, champions like Gragas or Elise can go out and play. So at this point, I feel like this is something you should adapt into your banning phase. Um, and for dynamic dudes, they have to ban away that Irelia because you don't want to give them that. So definitely two bans that we're going to see coming through. But at the same time, we've seen the T Talia ban, we've seen... The Eloy ban happened almost every game. We've seen the Vladimir bans happen. I mean, there's just so there's only so many champions that you can ban away, right? So yeah, exactly. I mean, which let me. It's kind of like you know, uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like which, in the first few rotations, even if it means giving their the, their early you know their their game plan away in in the first rotations, does this mean that these teams need to be picking away those priority picks very early on? Or do they rely on the bans and hope that it, you know, the other team just doesn't go for it? I, I think you should pick it or no. You as eliminated, at this point, I feel like they need to get some some safe picks, something they feel comfortable on, because their um, experiment simply hasn't worked. I, I don't know if Phantom of Justice's uh, misfortune is an experiment, because. Uh, he had to play Caitlyn or Ash in game two. Ash, and it was Ash. Yeah, it was Ash, right? Yeah. So that actually worked pretty well. You can go for that again. Uh, and I feel like that would actually be good enough because Misfortune is trash, as someone like Doublelift would, would say it. Uh, and now it looks like um, that, well, oh, I, no, I just lost my train of thought. Anyways, we're in the pick and ban phase. Let's get, let's get started. Oh, we're, we're in the pick and ban phase, and the first ban we're seeing come out is Fizz. Onion saying, no, we don't want none of that. And the respect ban, once again, coming out against Tarikyo. Talia is banned out as well. Um, we should note real quick that uh, Shingu and Shot and Klinga are going to be back in uh, the top and middle lane positions there for the dynamic dudes. Uh, glad to have them back, especially after such a dominant performance. Vladimir and Swain being banned away as well. So again, like some very standard bans um, sparsed in with... Uh, you know, the necessary bans here and there as needed, and Morgana being banned away, and Aurelia finally as well. I, I agree with the Morgana pick, because Shan Klinge were pretty crucial to that victory as well. He landed a lot of good bindings, and he just ended up bringing so much damage to the table in the end. So I, I agree with that ban, and yes, of course you have to take away Aurelia. Why 
not well she carried game two and you definitely don't want to give that uh, over to eliminate it again yeah definitely uh, a necessary ban and we're seeing the brom the early pick brom coming through here for onions or rather for phantom of justice or, money, or for sorry for money for fun uh I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of skeptical about this because they're giving away they're giving away the possibility of gaining a, a new uh, you know a, a contested pick, but maybe they just don't want to give their hand away. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sold on the brawl either. Well, it, it doesn't show too much of your composition already, but there are just so many better picks. Rise is still open. Ash, a, a seer. Um, We've seen the victory come out as well. There, there are so many picks open that I feel like are better than Brom. And yes, Morgana is banned, so you cannot like you can't exactly uh, counter Brom with a black shield. Uh, but but still, there are better picks in my opinion. And and if Rinka comes out, that is going to be huge. Yeah. Oh, ah. but no, it looks like Ruffy's gonna shift back towards his trusty Rexai. Uh, and I mean, he's just going to keep doing the worm. The worm has been serving him very well so far, so why would you move away? And we're going to see Shingu pick up the troll as well. Going to be doing his best troll dance up in the top lane there with that uh, with that trundle. Unless unless Killeridge decides to take it into the uh, into the <laughs> into the the support position and be very very uh, spring season. That is true. That we might see trundle in the bottom lane, but. Uh, I, I'd rather see in the top lane, just because the, the two picks that they had just come out with on the side of Dynamic Dudes, they are very stable, very safe, Trundle is not really going to have a lot of trouble, neither are Rexar, yeah. and it looks like client just bugged, so we will have to uh, to remake the lobby. Yeah, it looks like we had a bit of a bug splat there on the side of onions so we're gonna have to come back real quick. Uh, of course, the... Uh, as is standard procedure, the picks will remain the same, bands as well, one way or another. Yeah, we have this. Uh, we have this noted, uh, and uh, we'll be remaking the lobby as soon as uh, as soon as onions uh, can fix his bug splat. Yes, and well, we we can talk about the picks that dynamic dude came out with because Trundle is a, a safe top laner. He's going to be a split push as well, just. He's just the standard all around top laner at the at the current time in League of Legends and Rek'Sai is also still Ruffy's uh, go-to champion in this um in this uh, series. He's been playing it all four games now and for eliminated they should be looking at, at grabbing up an AD carry for Phantom of Justice. I think well I don't I think I know that you need to put Phantom of Justice onto Onto something where he feels comfortable, or he will simply not be uh, good enough in this game. If you put him on something like Misfortune again, they are then he's not going to be good enough. Um, so an AD carry would be wise to pick up at this point, and maybe even for Tureko, I'd say pick up something something comfortable because you need to get the carries onto. Onto something that they feel comfortable with, something they can farm up with, scale up with, and eliminate it. I wouldn't mind seeing them go for the for the same composition that they have gone for the last two games, which is a bit of a AOE composition um, and a slash of pick composition. But you cannot give them Karma either because you are taking away Morgana, but Karma is still open. And if you give them Karma, then there is still the, that peeling potential coming out of Dynamic Dudes. Yeah, and we're seeing uh, just the pick and ban phase. We're catching up here. Uh, remind you that the teams are forced to pick the same uh, picks that they had been going for previously. So that means that Ruffy should be picking up the Rek'Sai right about now. Um, when he's and, still trolling. Uh, he's still trolling. Uh, and interestingly enough, as we just found out, Money for Fun and Phantom of Justice are actually swapping roles this game, this time around, which means that Money for Fun is going to be picking up the AD carry position, and Phantom of Justice is moving over to something, uh, moving over to the support. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not this actually affects their gameplay at all, and uh, whether Money for Fun can actually make that AD carry position work a little better for the team this time around. That is definitely interesting because 
Now, uh, uh, like in the last game when you subbed in Shinku and shot in Klinge, you had that mentally advantage of not knowing how your opponent plays. Um, and with Phantom of Justice having to roll swap, it kind of means that it doesn't play more AD carries than Misfortune and Ash, and feels like Ash is not going to be on the table or at least sufficient in this game. And well, eliminated, they are looking at some very dramatic uh, picks in this game. Special Eyes has entered the rift, ladies and gentlemen. Maestro Yi has entered the field. Holy moly. A new challenger has appeared. As we uh, see Dark Ridge pick that up, potentially for the jungle. I'm going to guess that's a jungle pick. And uh, Tarekio picking up the Lux for himself. Well, if that is your comfortable pick, why not go for it? Um, but Master Yi, that is <laughs> a snowball heavy pick. Like. In the in the first game they led, that they lost, where they play K6, you are relying on getting ahead. You you cannot fall behind, or you will be non-existent and won't have any damage. So I, I like what what the, the the well I like the theory of Master Yi and Lux that the energy that they have, but I'm not completely sold on it. Yeah, and we're seeing, actually, I'd just like to point out for a, bit, for a little bit of lore, just for, for fun here, um, a Frel, for some Freljord heavy uh, compositions here coming up from both sides, of, uh, uh, an Ash Hover for Money for Fun, as well as the Brahm and the, the Trundle, as well as uh, the Lissandra here for Schottenklinge. I'm really interested to see what Schottenklinge can bring on this Lissandra if he actually decides to bring it into uh, the mid lane, which he most likely will, given the, the current state of their pick and ban phase. Um, but the lockdown that Lissandra provides in combination with the lockdown that we can get out of uh, a Leona for Killer Witch there, it's going to be really, really interesting and can really lead to some very interesting uh, interesting picks. Yeah, and it, it all helps with picking uh, Master Yi and, and Lux out of position. Now, now even Ash is going to be able to be picked out of position with the Solar Flare and Lissandra's Frozen Tomb. The... Oh, oh and we're, we're making looks, lobbies again. It looks like we had a bit of a another client issue here hmm well um okay so well we can talk a little bit about it so i, I really like what dynamic dudes we're going for because you so much as he and you know that he has to be shut down if you give him time to farm up he if if you just give him a few kills he's going to be strong he's going to be able to one v one most uh, players. He's going to be a split push monster as well. So, and I like the adaptation that they came with of going uh, with a lot of CC come from the owner and the Sandra, and it works so well against the rest of the team that Eliminated has built up because Ash is so immobile. Lux, once you just take away her cleanse, what she can, what can she do against those? Nothing and. I like those two picks. It it really fits well into Dynamic Dude's uh, composition. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what actually happens here. A bit of a. We're sorry about the the technical issues here. We're making sure that they are resolved as quickly as possible, and we'll, we're back into the pick and ban phase. Looks like uh... looks like we're getting through this quite quickly. Yes, we, oh, well, at least we should, because they just have to ban it out, but it all depends on how fast they are at banning out the champions and picking up their own champions, but yes, we should be getting this, through this soon and starting the game as well, um, but now for Dynamic Dudes, we only need to see the AD carry, and with Caitlyn still being up, I think that could be a possibility, Ash has been taken away. And if you don't go for Caitlyn, then I'd like to see something like Ezreal, because he could actually be really strong. It, it could fit well into this composition of kiting, having the CC, and with Ezreal going for Frozen Gauntlet, I, I'd like I'd like to see that. But then again, Caitlyn with traps and all of the crowd control that Dynamic Dudes are bringing, that could be so interesting. And the last pick for Eliminated, that's going to be interesting. Because the last pick is going to be Jax, and now 
I feel like this whole composition from Eliminated is so much of a um, solo queue experience. Basically, you have the Master Yi that just instant locks it, and you have Jax who's going to be split pushing all game, and then you have the mid lane and the AD carry that are going to be working together. Um, and it's not like their composition is bad. They just have got countered so hard by Leona and um, and the Sandra. And, and even Trundle is going to be strong against Jax because Jax will split push, but Trundle is going to be able to to work against that. And he's also going to have to subjugate to shut down Jax whenever they are going to be fighting. Yeah, very interesting picks here uh, coming out for both of these teams. The Jax, I'm interested to see, like you said, it's surprising to me that they would uh, pick that up given that they have the Trundle on the other side. But at the same time, I mean, if it's a comfort pick, nothing beats experience, right? Uh, aside from, I guess, a street counter, but in this case, we're talking about a level six here. Uh, what is a little more interesting, however, is that Dark Ridge, uh, the Dark Ridge Master Yi pick, I mean, like, out of left field for sure, uh, subject to quite a bit of lockdown, but, I mean, if he gets rolling, they'll see him rolling, that's for sure. Yeah, they will see him rolling, and, and then someone like Molly will be in a lot of trouble but I, I, I don't think it's going to be rolling because you have Rek'Sai she's not going to be directly invading but she's a better ganker than Master Yi and therefore you can just ignore Master Yi for now let the CC work on him later and, and get your lanes rolling Leona and Lucian against Braum and Ash. That's going to be really brutal for uh, Money for Fun and Phantom of Justice. They they should not be able to win that lane. It all depends on whether or not Molly <laughs> gets hit by a lot of Mollys. Um, but for now, just leave Darkridge alone. There's no reason to go and invade onto him. Just let him farm up and then let the CC work on him. Yeah, and uh, I think the, the cool thing to point out, or the thing that we need to point out though, is uh, if because we're seeing Eliminated go for a bit of a pick composition once again that's focused around the Braum pick. So if they actually manage to get the... If they manage to 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 get the Jax and the Master Yi rolling, if they get enough auto attacks rolling onto, onto their pick, I mean, we're talking about Chain CC relying on auto attacks and all they need on top of this maybe a little bit more lockdown from Lux. But once they actually have a target locked down, as long as that target isn't too tanky, I mean, it's a field day for Elim Eliminated. They just kind of have to make sure that they get the right picks. What does Dynamic Dudes need to do, aside from getting picked out, obviously? What is their game objective going into the first, like, five, or, like, the first 10 to 15 minutes of the game? Given that Mastery is going to be farming up, and given that, uh, I mean, they have perhaps a little bit of lane superiority. Well, you said that lane superiority is the, is the name of the game for them in the first 10 to 15 minutes, because... Lissandra against Lux, Lux was, will be able to keep shoving the waves, yes, but in a gank, I'd rather have a Lissandra and a Rek'Sai. Um, in the bottom lane, I always talked about that, Ash is going to have a hard time. And in the top lane, Trundle is going to be able to handle his own against Jax. Maybe even overtake the lane, it is kind of a uh, skill matchup in my opinion. But once the subjugates, subjugate uh, comes out from Shingu, he's going to be better. So for dynamic dudes, it's not about being react. Sorry, uh, being active. It's about being reactive and then just shutting down whatever eliminated are looking at doing. Yeah, it will be uh, interesting to see whether or not they can make that happen. And I mean, I think the other thing to point out is that the uh, red side here, dynamic dudes, have a lot more. Uh, they have a lot more going for them as far as overall map control. I mean, given that they have the double teleport and they just have so much more extra mobility. Uh, I mean, if Eliminated get caught out at the wrong place at the wrong time, that could be, you know, that could easily be their death knell. Yeah, and they cannot fall behind either. They, they, they are... I'm not quite sure because, yes, they, they have a little bit of everything. They, they have Jax and Master Yi which fits into a push comp, then you have Locks who fits into a pick composition, but all of them also fits into an AOE composition, so basically the, the composition is, it has a little bit of everything, a little bit from all worlds, uh, but th th then again, it relies so heavily 
on these tiny links that all change together into one big chain. And if just one of the links doesn't chain that well together, then the 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 the, the composition will just fall apart, and they they won't have any way of winning team fights. Yeah, it's definitely a daring, a risk-taking composition here coming out of Eliminated. Who will be playing on the blue side for this fourth game of the Compete League Open League European Finals? Uh, welcome to you, dear viewer, if you are just joining us. You have Eliminated on the blue side with Onions in the top lane, Dark Ridge in the jungle on the Master Yi, Tareko on the Star Guardian Lux in the mid lane, Money for Fun on the Ash, and Phantom of Justice in the Braum. And on the red side, you do have the dynamic dude who is playing with Shinko in the top lane, playing on a Trundle. You have Ruffy playing once again his Rek'Sai, who's been playing four out of uh, four games. You have Shadden Klinge coming in for the second game in this uh, in this final, playing the Sandra. And then you have the bottom lane consisting of Molly and Killer H on Lucian and Leona, respectively. Yeah, and uh, we got to point out that the Molly and Killer Ridge's bot lane has been very, very deadly so far. Uh, even in their loss, they were performing rather well. Uh, so they are definitely a force to be reckoned with. Two players that play very, very well together. Um, and we're seeing, once again, unlike every other, every, unlike every game, uh, unlike, unlike the first game, sorry, uh, these two teams here playing very, very safely and uh, making sure that they do not give any early advantages over to the enemy. Exactly. We don't want to see level uh, the level one from game one all over again, where eliminated were able to give three kills over to the side of dynamic dudes uh, just before they even got into the lane. Yeah, well, uh, we're seeing Braum here, money for uh, Phantom, Phantom of Justice rather, uh, being a little adventurous, going in, having a little chuckle in the river, establishing his river dominance, doing a little dance. Um, but uh, no deep wards, no extra information. He's going to spot out that Leona, so they're no, they know that they're going in for the 2v2, and they know that uh, Jax is, they want Jax to go up against that Trundle up in the top lane. And we're actually also going to see both junglers start on uh, the bottom side of the map, or the respective bottom sides of the map, meaning that we could see an early, uh, some early top lane ganks, perhaps, if uh, Darkridge is feeling adventurous enough to uh, take that Master Yi top uh, uh, early on. Yeah, adventurous is definitely something Darkridge has to be in order to uh, already be ganking. And if a gank just falls flat, then the champion pick of Master Yi simply won't be worth... Or, or, sorry, let me rephrase that because there is a saying about that. The light simply wouldn't be worth the candle. And then Darkridge would be shut down and <laughs> the momentum would already be lost for the side of eliminated there. And then, then what are you going to do? Because if you don't have any momentum going, then you're behind. You have, as I said, some very weak links that just won't fit together. Yeah, and so far, uh, every all is even in uh, in lane and battle. So we see Killeridge uh, getting very close. He does get stunned by the Braun passive in the end, uh, but uh, comes out not too worse for wear, only about to down to half health. He's going to be able to chug a potion and get back up real quick. Did, did, um, you, did you see that when Killeridge uh, used his Senate Blade to go in onto Molly for fun? Molly just instantly uh, dashed backwards. <laughs> I mean, perhaps not on the same page. There a little bit of a, uh, I mean that, or he was going for a lot ultimate, but just didn't had hadn't hit level six yet. But it looked uh, very comical. <laughs> but so far, uh, each lane uh, pretty even. I mean, uh, Shingu could be getting into a little bit of a fight there with onions, but uh, can't do too much to him while he, uh, while. Um, Shingo has that frozen terrain down. He'll be able to regen up pretty pretty quickly. As we do see, money for fun and Phantom just is getting pushed in here on this bottom lane. So slight no. disadvantage over there for uh, Pop Molly. Oops, onions. Ah, well, again, Shingo. Wait, what? Is oh, Shingo, you're a little. Oh, it's it's a bit of a daring move there to try and go in uh, under turret. He's going to be able to chug a Corrupting Potion though and get back a little bit more health. Ruffy comes in but gets locked down by Lux. Showing her lane dominance once again. The Light Binding, yeah. doing work. Exactly, now Shankling is actually a hit over... 
to raid you and oh, money for oh fun killer rich goes in and this time molly is not dashing backwards but killer is taking a lot of damage money for fun though taking shits fr taking hits from molly killers though just able to keep chugging potions to keep himself very healthy and now molly had a comfortable 10 cs lead and being able to dodge those bronchus is not going to harm him at all so molly is ahead in cs Shadow King is ahead in CS. Off the carriage for Dynamic Deuce is just building up a great base to go for. And if they can just keep up this CS, then momentum, then momentum is going to be on their side uh, in their favor. And the pressure of just falling too far behind will be too big for Eliminator because that means that Dark Witch simply, simply haven't been good. And as you say, Little strokes, they fell great oaks. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, and speaking of, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a Maokai pick come out yet. A very stable top lane pick. I am disappointed, both teams. Uh, oh, no, a flash from Onions is going to lead Shadowfling it down almost to his death, but he's going to be able to flash away, and even the Lux. Well, Shadowfling was forced to use his flash there, so good enough trade. It's not like Onions really needs his uh, his uh, flash in the top lane, but it's it's really smart of Onions, in my opinion, to um, to go and roam already at that point because he's also falling behind in terms of farm, and just try to look for some opportunities elsewhere because he's having so much trouble against Shingu, and you're not going to be able to farm against him, especially when he is zoning you so hard away from the the waves. So, smart decision in my opinion. Yeah, very smart indeed, uh, trying to make something happen. Although he doesn't make actually manage to pull it off. I mean, he does get to uh, burn a flash and a teleport out of Schattenklinge. Means that his team has a little bit map more, a little bit more uh, lane safety and map mobility for the next uh, couple minutes. As we're seeing Look at Schattenklinge. Now. Onions going on to Shingo once again, but Ruffy is here, gets the knock up onto Onions. Onions forced to hop, skip, and jump away. As now we're seeing the subjugate go down on to Onions, but a little bit of trouble down in the bot lane. Money for fun could make it out alive. He does. The help from Schottenklinga makes sure, though, that Money for Fun is forced out of lane, having to pop both his heal and his flash. Yeah, so they don't get to kill on some money for fun, but as you said, they pop his summoners, and that could be very crucial in some of the future fights now that uh, his flash is going to be down for five minutes, and he's going to be behind in farm. He's going to be losing a lot of the farm, and well, a dragon could potentially come out for a dynamic for a dynamic duo. And I, I feel like that the momentum is just so much in their favor. They are the ones controlling this game, and well, the, the driver's seat is also in their hands. Yeah, it it looks like uh, Onions also burned his teleport trying to get away from the gank between Ruffy and Shingu, so he's not going to have that available, and basically that, that means that Shingu is the only, the sole uh, carrier of a teleport right now, which, uh, you know, dynamic dudes could try to put, in, put, to, put to use in their favor. Yeah, they definitely could, because now, as you said, a teleport advantage will, again, it's all about this momentum that the dynamic dudes are building up because the teleport advantage means momentum swing for them means that they can pressure elsewhere on the map and actually build up a... Uh, oh, she... Oh, 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 oh. oh Sean and Klinger gets caught up in the light binding and he'll be going down. Tarikio gets his first kill of the game. Well, but then again, how just... could he possibly have known that they were there? That is true, but you went for a very um, risky time. Oh, money for fun! Oh, Ruffy, money for gets onto money for fun. Money for fun has reminded you he's no summoner spells. Trying to have justice taken down so low, forced to flash away, and uh, counting his lucky stars that he did not perish right there. Yeah, money for fun is so lucky in this game. He's been getting away with his life two times now, where he shouldn't have been able to do so, but. That actually means that Eliminated are going to be ahead in terms of gold already into this game. And now, oh, oh Killer, Killer Ridge! Going? Killer Ridge going in very, very deep, and Fenn Majestus is forced to pop the shield. He will not make it, though. Unbreakable will not be able to save him, and that's uh, the first kill in the bottom lane happening right there. 
Although Darko is here as well. Darko up in the top lane. He keeps putting the pressure onto Shingu. Oh, but Anya's oh, gonna get another tower hit, and Shingo gets a kill. He could be getting another one into Dark Rage, and Killer is taking tower hits as well. But it, Molly and Money, and Molly and Killer is getting a kill onto Money for Fun, but Money for Fun gets one back with help from the turret. Shingu gets his second kill of the game, and Dynamic Dude's now leading it 5 to 2. Okay, so Dark Rage tries to go into the top lane, but Shingo now has three kills because that gang went very, very wrong. And Shingu, when he goes back, he's going to have a Sunfire, so he's going to be so strong at this point. And I actually don't like to see him go for the Sunfire. I, I'd like to see him go for the Tiamat because Tiamat is so essential for every Trundle build. And I feel like you, you are that far ahead that you could really afford to go for this. Um, but he decides to go for the Ninja Tabi, so he's just building pure... Uh, team fight wise, he doesn't really want to be a split pusher, which I find it very weird because Tiamat, as I said, is just so essential for every Trundle build. Indeed, indeed, and uh, I mean, okay, first of all, the first thing we have to point out is the, the, oh, a bit of a fight there breaking out in the bottom lane. Molly is taken down, about to have health, and he's, but he's very daring, but maybe a bit of a mistake there. He chooses to focus onto money for fun instead of trying to run away, but it will let Killeridge get away with his life, and uh, it looks like maybe Eliminator are going to try to convert this into a Drake. Shot and Klinger, though, in a bit of trouble, tries to use the claw, but Onions is there in order to make sure that he does not is not able to get away, and that's a, an, an assist going over to Tarikio and the first kill for Onions in this game. This game is so messy, both teams are getting kills left, right and center and now a dragon also being picked up for the side of Lemonade. Shingo is looking to pick onions out there but it's not going to be able to find him and well Shingo, uh, he has his Bami's cinder so he can just keep shoving these waves and well while he doesn't have any AD from a team out, he does have the Ninja Tabi, so a lot of survivability against Onions, and he now relies a lot on uh, on the grasp of the Undying. Um, oh, Ruffy's Ruff here. He's gonna try and get the knock up. It doesn't look like it's gonna happen, but Shingu was brave enough to dive that turret. Onions is in a ton of trouble right now. Ruffy is the one he's taking hits, and it looks like Shingu is going to be following, but it looks like Ruffy is going to be taking down Dark Ridge with the Alpha Strike is gonna be taking him down. Onions manages to skip away, and it looks like Dark Ridge could be coming in for a gank now, trying to capitalize on this man advantage. Well, you are Trundle with no damage. Oh, Dark Ridge again coming up into the top lane. Yeah, they'll never expect a seventh gank, and here he comes. The ultimate is on. That means he cannot be slowed down by the subjugate, but he will only, you know, give him a bit of a love tap and then run away. Just a bit of a love tap, as you said. And Rexai is now going to the bottom lane. So you can see, sorry, the bottom side of the jungle, but you can immediately see Dark Ridge and Onions um, just pull away from the top lane as soon as they heard the farm alarm coming out from uh, Ruffy. However, uh, it's good for Eliminated to get a few kills because that means that they won't fall too far behind and they are now only behind uh, around 400 gold, which is actually it, it's good enough for them. It's practically even and that means that their, um, their momentum and the, the pressure of them coming back isn't totally gone and well Tigerich has two of the kills that Eliminator has so for him that pick has actually been uh, seeing a little bit of a shining light now just has to continue the streak of getting more kills. Yeah, indeed it does and uh, interesting to point out that also I mean, uh, Dynamic Dude's bot lane for once is only about 10 CS ahead and their lane dominance is not quite what we're used to seeing out of, uh, out of this matchup. Uh, Trundle 20 CS ahead and uh, Shingu that is, and Schlattenkling is only, well, now actually 20 CS behind uh, Tarekio. Um, and with two deaths to his name, Schlattenkling is not quite having the same impact as he was before. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't want to go as far as calling him a Morgana one trick, but uh, it certainly seems that as far as this game's concerned, uh, them, uh, the eliminated banning that champion away has uh, dealt a significant blow to their mid laner. It, it has. And I I mean, to defend Shadden Klinger a little bit, he has been visited by Onions two times, so 
At, le at least one of the times he shouldn't have died because yeah, this is flash up and just work really with that. But I mean, I mean, still he's actually more or less even in terms of farm. He's only behind 20 CS, so that's that that's okay. That's something you can work around. Um, but yes, he could definitely be in a better position. Indeed, indeed, it looks like. Ruffy is trying to come around here. Oh, does he see Darkridge there? I don't think he does. Very dangerous situation there, and Darkridge manages to get away with it. Very cheeky on his part. Um, well, let's touch upon uh, the first 15 minutes of this game. Incredibly even uh, compared to the other games that we've seen so far. One Drake going over to uh, Eliminated, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was an Ocean Drake, meaning that uh, they're having a little bit of an easier time laning in their laning phase and healing up. Oh, but there goes Killerich. He's on to Money Front, and the Solar Flare is used as well, but the Unbreakable Great Ultimate coming out of Phantom of Justice, which means that Killerich is even going to be going down despite the uh, teleport. Would, uh, the teleport from Onions is going to manage to help secure that kill, and Molly is forced to flash away. And, oh, Onions, though, in hot pursuit, he doesn't mind taking a couple of turret shots as long as he has the potential to get. The Counter-Strike is not going to hit, meaning that Molly is safe, but here comes Shingu. Rek'Sai is coming in as well. They hear, like you said, they hear the call. Money for fun now, and Phantom Justice caught up the greed once again for Eliminated, taking them a step Holy. too far, a bridge too far, and it looks like Onions could be going down as well unless Tariku can protect him for long enough from the troll. The final spark not hitting anything as Shingu now not necessarily in too much trouble. As you can see Ruffy is in the backside as well, flashes over, trying to get the knock up onto Onions, and Onions will be going down to Ruffy in the end. Tariku now forced to run away from the troll, and all in all, that's a... I mean, that's a, that's a three for... that's a four for two. Four for yeah, one. yeah, four for one, and I mean, it all started with it looking so grim for dynamic dudes because they didn't respect the teleport from onions. They did, they they should have known that that was up. Um, however, they were able to just. Sorry, I just again I lost. They were able to, uh, to punish the side of eliminated for being. This aggressive, overextending after they got the first kill, they shouldn't have done that. And they punished them very well, got four kills, and now the ratio is forced to use his glance and a a um, a glimpse of the void buff also going over to Shinku. He is a huge split pusher right now, and despite him not having a uh, tier mat, he is really able to deal with onions because of all this tanky stats that he has. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Shingu doing a lot of work for his team right now, and I have to say, like, I gotta give it up to, to Dynamic Dudes. They know exactly how to punish the overaggression coming out of Eliminated and Onions. And I mean, Onions, he's been that playmaking champion or that playmaking character or the playmaking, well, sorry, player for his uh, for his team. You know, he's been that reliable carry. But uh, his overaggression and you know wanting to, wanting to be that and wanting to you know try and carry the game is taking him a little bit too far and. Uh, Dynamic dudes, dudes knew just how to how to punish that. Here comes Ruffy and oh, Onions caught up again. again. Ruffy is here. He's gonna try and get the knockup. He doesn't will not get it. Being since he catches Darkridge, Darkridge in a ton of trouble. He can't be slow, but he can be killed. Ruffy getting his third kill of the game as he's helping uh, Shot and Klinga get to the point where he needs to be. Oh, and Shot and Klinga comes in with the ultimate onto Jax. Onions goes down for the fourth time this game, and things are looking not so good for Eliminated right now. Yeah, not looking good at all for Eliminated, and um, it's just now Onions got his Trinity Force, that is, it's, it's five minutes too late, he needed to have that way earlier, he needed to not be killed four times, and the only shining light for Eliminated at this point is um, Terekio in the mid lane, and, and <laughs> I mean, we talked about how Yi needed to be even, he needed to snowball, and, uh, well he needed to at least be even, he needed to snowball really heavily, or the light simply wouldn't be worth the candle, and well, he got two kills and now he's died three times without getting any more kills, so this this pick has simply not worked out in, in the way that it should have worked out. Indeed it hasn't, uh, however Killeridge can tell you all about lights and tell you how his solar flares have been hitting just when they need to. Uh, definitely worth uh, the ultimate cooldown that light was, I'll say. Um, oh, but there he goes again, in he goes, and the solar flare hits, but just 
Barely, Phantom just is getting the Unbreakable up just in time. He's trying to move away, but he manages to hit the ultimate. Moves back in, takes a little bit more damage. Ruffy not able to secure a kill for his team, but does get does bait the ultimate out of Phantom of Justice, plus a flash, I believe. And that is good enough, because now, with that flash being gone, Ruffy can come back and uh, gank once again. But Dynamic Duties has to be careful, because Starkwitch is in the bottom side, so is Terrakio, and there is still an enchanted crystalline um, arrow out from Money for Fun, so a re-engage could be a real possibility. Yeah, and at the same time, I think we have to point out how much that how, the glimpse of the void buff has done so much for for Shingu. Uh, you know, like you said, leading that split push and being a total nuisance to um, eliminated. Torikio misses the uh, light binding on Shingu, but does manage to grab Shot and Klinga, so. It's not too worse for wear, although he has to pop his flash as well. Darkridge is here, but Darkridge is also standing on some frozen terrain. Darkridge is taking so much damage. Shot and will take it down. The final spark comes out of Terekio, but there's a lot of uh, CC coming up from Shot and Klinga. Shot and Klinga almost taking down Terekio, just barely staying alive, and he's going to be forced to, out of his lane, though. And, and uh, you just had Shingo in a corner. If you had went in with Terekio and Darkridge is but were able to just keep on auto attacking him and Tureko used his whole combo on Shingo, then that could perhaps have been a kill, but now Shingo's in the top lane and he's looking to kill onions. What can onions do? Nothing except to run. Yeah, indeed, very difficult situation. And I mean I can't help but think that they need the Braum to be roaming, they need the Braum to be making this team composition work, and they're just taking Eliminator, they're just taking way too much time to make this work properly for them. And now we see Money for Fun overextended, it's forced to force pop his flash. The Solar Flare plus the uh, Lucian Ultimate are just going to take him down so quickly with health, a little bit of health from the Ruffy uh, knockup. And now Phantom of Justice forced to use his Unbreakable. I mean, this is a really difficult situation. Oh, Molly could be in a bit of trouble now. The ultimate from Phantom Justice is actually going to end up being just a field goal. They're forcing the teleport out of Shot and Klinga. However, Phantom Justice could be caught up, and he will go down. Molly gets his, his fifth kill of the game, and now there's a four-man collective in the bottom lane for Dynamic Dudes ready to shove this one in. And in the meantime, we see Shingu completely free to roam in the top lane, going to take down the Tier 2 turret. Glimpse of the Void is doing so much work for Shinko and the dynamic dudes they are just picking up advantages left, right and center, nothing that Master Yi can do, nothing that Tureju can do and he is the shining line for eliminated with him being even Darkridge again. Oh him. Darkridge! Out of position gets taken up by Shot and Klinga, who's coming back in this game right about now, a 3-2-2. Two, two. Only 30 CS behind, well, 30 CS behind, but nonetheless, like, those kills are worth a lot more to him right now. And Money for Fun having a very hard time keeping the trundle out, but Onions, though, in the midst of three players, Sean Klingon pops the Zonis, but he'll be going down in the end, thanks to Terekio and work from Onions. Looks like Molly is not going to be able to pick up the, re the revenge kill. But nonetheless, I mean, we're seeing Dynamic Dudes a full 11, or sorry, 9 kills ahead uh, at 22 minutes. This is a very dangerous situation as we see now a Mountain Drake having spawned uh, and uh, Dynamic Dudes are in perfect position to take this. I, I love the build coming out of Molly. It really works wonders for him. It, it gives him more durability. Uh, I'm not even quite sure if that is worth it. It gives him more... Uh, it, it, oh, it empowers his... Wait, never mind. He's going down. Oh, Molly's going to go down thanks to that enchanted crystalline arrow. Money for Fun's second or fourth contribution of the of the game. Um, Tricky is going to take that kill, leading him to a 3-0 and one a scoreboard. And as I was saying before, Molly died. His build gives him, it empowers his ability to duel. Um, and also, Essence Weaver got buffed here, in pad 6.12, so it now has 5% extra AD. Uh, so we don't really see that Yumu's coming out, and it just means that Essence Weaver will be stronger in the late game. And also, Lucian, who is this far ahead here in it, what is essentially still the mid game, it, it is a good item. It, it, it is nothing else you could go for that would be better. Maybe a Yumu's would be strong and a Black Cleaver, but then you would give up on your late game. Holy oh, Shot and Klinger oh. takes it down! 
uh, Dark Ridge very, very quickly. Tariku the, to find, comes up with the final spark, but is not able to take down Shotklinger, who's going to be moving way now. Killer Ridge and Ruffy in a bit of a tough spot. The Braum ultimate hits from, from Phantom of Justice. Killer Ridge will be going down eventually to money for Fun's arrows, uh, but Ruffy's going to be able to make it out, and that's a one for one, I believe. Yes, it is. A one for one indeed, and now some kills has gone over to Tarekio and uh, Money for Fun, so they are better in oh, the game. Crystal oh, Crystal Arrow! The field goal. Onions, though. Oh, it's so unfortunate that Crystal Arrow was so close, but yet so far. They could have probably taken down Shingu and had that hit. But now at least uh, Eliminator are going to be able to pressure this bottom, this uh, mid lane turret, this tier 2. But in the meantime, we see uh, Molly just you know, taking down that tier 1, getting more advantages for his team. He's going to have to deal with Dark Ridge in the bottom lane, but that's nothing he can't handle. Yeah, well, However, ah. he could be getting collapsed on as well. He'll have to be careful, try to move over to the dragon. Yeah, Molly has to be careful now, because he's solo extending without no vision. Um, and well, for dynamic dude... Like in the last few games, just let Shingo do his thing in split pushing. Let him use the glimpse of the void. Uh, send him to the bottom lane. There's still an inner there. Then the rest of the oh. team groups in the mid lane. What? Is what? Phantom? What? Oh, Phantom just decided to give him a free. Decided to give Molly a free pass. I guess it, it's about sending a message. It is about it. It's showing. It's you know, coming up, establishing your dominance. Exactly. Just. Yeah, you know, saying that's right. You you dash away, young man. I'll let you get away this time. This is my territory, you go away. <laughs> but, well, it, it, for now, just, you could group up in the mid lane for dynamic dudes. They have so much damage that they could potentially come out with. They could even pick up the, the mountain drake to enhance their ability to kill towers and uh, neutral objectives. And then let Shingo go to the bottom. Well, oh, Tarkwish gets taken down. He can't be slow, but he can be frozen. And Shot and Klinga sends him to the morgue. That's going to be Darkridge's seventh death of the game with only 82 CS to his name. He is not uh, having the best game right now. No, that ping is not working out at all. And now finally, the, the, the last outer turret of this game for Eliminated will go down. And the gold dominance will be established. Shingu is behind enemy lines, but he doesn't care. Shingu stunned, but unbroken the solar flare to save his life. Great play coming from Killerage. And they managed to take down the tier two, the tier one mid turret. Shingu, so lucky. I mean, he's, he's got to be dancing in his mind. Just doing a big old troll dance. I mean, like, yeah, you can't kill me. So he, he just walks behind him. He comes from his side, walks through the inner turret. Takes a lot of damage and he doesn't even go down. That that must be mind tilting. And now onions again going in, but you have to be wary of Killer H. In these small corridors, Killer H is working wonders. And dynamic use don't want to give up this mountain rig. It would help them so much. But Shingo, he's looking for that flank with the teleport. Yeah, he's waiting for his the right moment. This only a pink ward to help him in the tri brush. Not sure if he'll be moving it there. Phantom of Justice and Terakio moving ahead, and they're going to give their team enough time to take that Mountain Drake. Uh, Dynamic Dude's just not willing to commit to that, which is not an, an unreasonable sentiment to have. They are sending about 6k gold ahead, but now the huge knockup from Ruffy is Money for Fun is taken down very low. Ruffy, though, taken low as well, and he'll be going down to Dark Ridge eventually. Onions, it looks like he'll be going down. The final spark hits a number of the, the Dynamic Dudes, but they will be taking... they will not be taken down as Tarekio's oh, yes. oh. an amazing uh, light binding there to take out Molly and to curb uh, that uh, that push a little bit but Shingu, Killeridge, and Shankling can still do a lot of damage to this mid lane as we see uh, in totally I believe a 2 for 4 uh, in favor of Dynamic Dudes. And now the problem is that Tarekio has enough to break here to deal with them but Shankling can oh. also just kill him. Shot and Klinga being very daring, take, keeping Tarekio at bay, making sure that Shingu and Killerwitch can do enough damage to this mid lane tier 2 turret. Uh, and, and I mean, Tarekio can clear all he wants, but he's not going to be able to clear away these champions. And this huge uh, vision advantage at 28 minutes coming through here for the dynamic dudes. Okay. Uh, now Shingu finally gets his tier mat after completing his uh, Ice Form Gauntlet, and he is so strong at this point. Oh, the uh, crystal, crystal arrow! Crystal arrow just flying by, but at, at this point, nobody can touch Shingu because he has so much damage coming out from Icebound Gauntlet and the Tiamat, 
And even if you get onto him, someone like Onions or Dark Witch for that matter won't be able to touch him because Ninja Tabis got buffed here in patch 6.12. They now have 12% damage reduction instead of 10. And that just means that these auto attacks focused um, champions, someone like Money for Fun, Dark Witch and Onions, they can't touch him. They cannot indeed, and I mean at this point, uh, it's almost as if Shingu was just, you know, walking through the north, <laughs> unkillable. The only thing it perhaps able to kill him was a piece of dragon glass. A white walker, if you will. Well, I am sure that wherever he is at, isn't he... Ah. Let me try again. I'm sure wherever he is at, it's not raining. That is in the side of... Uh... Eliminate, then they are surely not singing in the rain. Oh, <laughs> definitely not. They are uh, counting the minutes go by as uh, they try to come back into this game. Currently, uh, 7k gold behind his onions, though, trying to make his fortunes happen, but he will be stopped by. No, he gets taken. He takes uh, Shot and Klinga down as Shingu gets a return kill up in the top lane, taking down money for fun. And, uh, oh boy, this is, this is a very difficult situation. I mean, Onions is definitely capable of taking down one champion at a time. I mean, that's just Jax. That's just what Jax does. It's Jax things. But can Onions translate this into more significant advantages for his team? That's where the real question is. Yes, that is indeed a real question. And, I mean, Onions, you still have to be scared of him in a, uh, in a split push. But... He's not as big as a threat as Shingu, and I'm, s I'm still not sure why dynamic dudes are not either grouping up or sending Shingo to the boss lane, because Shingo, he cannot touch the, the inhibitor towers, and the rest of his team cannot touch the inner turret in the boss lane, so why not shift that around, make sure that Shingo can touch the inner turret, and, and you could perhaps start to... To pressure the Baron, perhaps. Baron could be a solution to also problems for dynamic dudes and would be a nail in the coffin. Yeah, there's a lot that they could be doing with that, but they do need to set up for it properly, and so far there's very, very little vision around that area. Uh, but meaning that does also mean that if given the opportunity and if uh, they don't get spotted, uh, that the eliminated team could try and uh, steal away a sneaky Baron. Uh, however, it looks like there are some pings going down right now. Uh, indicating that uh, the dynamic dudes have their eye on that objective coming up next. Yeah, next up in 1 minute and 40 seconds is going to be an Infernal Drake. Something you definitely want to get. Because if you can get that Infernal Drake, someone like Shingo who is building a little bit of hybrid would be very good. But basically also Lissandra would be able to burst better. Molly would, sorry, Molly would have more damage and it would help your team so much but you have to be allowed to take that because you still have to be very of eliminated oh, oh wait, phantom is getting doesn't... caught out though he's taking a lot of damage ruffy in a bit of trouble as well gets caught up by the brum but that only hits him and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to translate that in the meantime shingo's just having a field day in that bottom lane well finally they... now with his tiamat or rather his ravenous hydra well now they, they are at least pressuring around the Baron, and it, it, it's not aimlessly at this point, because it, if they can just keep pressuring here, they will be able to force the eliminated squad to come and, and check there, and then they will be able to turn on to them and actually pick up some kills. And However, Shinko has his teleport and he shouldn't be here, he should be down and fighting against Onions. Yeah, and Shingu is here. He's made his presence no on. Uh, yeah, and he will not be able to stop Onions' split push. And Onions uh, still has teleport available as well, meaning that there is a certain map advantage uh, on the side of Eliminated right now. Well, Shingo is finally going back to the bottom lane. <sighs> Just now, the dragon is the next objective. For, um, for dynamic dudes because you don't want to give more dragons over to the side of eliminated they, they are starting to come back into this game 
I mean, Terrakio is still very strong. Money for fun is just only going to get better. And so is Dark Witch. But oh, Onions, Onions is, is caught at the, the four champions in the middle with the Crystalline Arrow is going to hit Ruffy. Molly's going to be taken down by the final spark. Terrakio, though, Money for fun is caught up in, in that Solar Flare. And he could potentially will be going down. But the Bromoth is going to save him. He's going to be able to flash away. And Phantom of Justice is going to be the one to go down. Killer Witch takes him down. Money for fun, though, now being chased what? by Shingu. Shingu is going to take him down. Onions, though, doing so much work. Dark Ridge taking him down so low. He's forced to run away. He flashes away. Ruffy, though, in hot pursuit. Killers, though, is left alone to die in the hands of Onions. And it looks like Ruffy is finally going to take down Dark Ridge, but Onions is able to do so much damage to uh, this uh, dynamic dude's team, and there are no carries here to stop his push. And Shingu could actually be going down for the first time this game, unless he does go down in the end so close. He was on the, the frozen... Uh, on the frozen soil there, but it could not be taken. The final spark is going to hit. Onions is not going to be able to land. He does get the lead. He can. Can he follow? No. He will. The Raptors are going to take him. Are going to take down Ruffy in the end, and I believe that's a delayed ace. But Molly was caught out of position there. Should not have been in that position. But Tureko, really well played by him to see that Molly was there. Just used his whole, um, his whole combo to burst him down. Really smart. And then from there, it just went down because Shaden Klinger were not able, well, she didn't use his frozen tomb to save himself. And then from there, you just have no damage left. And that's an infernal trade going over to the side of Eliminated. And they're getting back into this game. They have such a good late game skill in team composition with Dark Witch, Jax, Lux, and Ash. All of this damage will be strong in the late game. And they are basically at this point giving them a free pass. Yeah, and definitely a very dangerous situation here for Dynamic Dudes. Uh, and, for, well, I believe that our first game that's going over uh, the 33-minute mark, uh, and they haven't closed it out yet, and, I mean, this is... this could We could be going in for a, uh, a late-game bamboozle here. Uh, and let's, let's take stock here at 36 minutes, almost. Dynamic Dudes are six kills ahead, but only four and a half K gold ahead. They currently hold a four... Uh, four tower lead, but I've also lost three dragons over to Eliminated. So, I mean, I want to say it's almost like a 55 45 situation at this point. It, it, exactly. They have to utilize, well, Dynamic Dudes have to utilize Shadow Klinger. They have to look for someone to use that frozen tomb on. Um, and it has to be someone like Money for Fun or, or Dark Witch because they have to be removed from the fight or else the fight will be lost and i'd like to point out that Terrakio hasn't even died yet so he is so strong at this point and he has a, a death cap and his voice stuff so basically you are you have to look out for all of the abilities that can come out of Terrakio or Lux will just carry away this this fight with alongside uh, dark Witch and money for fun Difficult situation indeed, and what we really, I mean, like, what, what Dynamic Dudes need to do right now, above all else, in your opinion, would be focus the Baron, try to flex their advantage, or make sure that they send Shingu off into the side lane so they can get some extra pressure there. What what does what does the what does this team need to do in order to close this one out? Because they still do hold that advantage. The, well, it, it's hard because I'd like to see Shingo split push, um, and I'd like to see the rest of the team group up. Uh, and try to take some objective somewhere. At this point, it is Baron, and you have a teleport on the side of Shingo, so you can fight around the Baron. But you just want to get a pig at this point. It, your your composition is not a a team fight composition anymore. At this point, it is a pig composition because in a full blown five v five, it is going to be eliminated coming out ahead. So you need to look for a pig. You need to frozen tomb someone, and it has to be a carry, and it cannot be Phantom of Justice. Yeah, definitely have, gonna have to pick their targets very wisely, but at the same time, uh, Onions, Darkridge, and the rest of Eliminated are being very wise themselves and making sure that they are uh, not giving them that opportunity. However, Onions, perhaps in a bit of trouble, he has a GA, but he is very far away from the rest of his team. He could be distracting the rest of Dynamic Dudes in order to let his team take the Baron, however, as they will be starting that up indeed. However, it looks like Ruffy is going to spot it out. Could he's, Is he going to tunnel over? He could. <laughs> the Brahm is there to hit him up. But oh, and they do secure the dynamic dude. Still the Baron and Dark Rage is taking down Solo. The Crystal Arrow is gonna roughly, but it's not gonna do 
good. Has Shigo gets to double kill as he takes down um, Dark Red. Now Phantom Justice caught up in a ton of trouble as well. And Onions manages to secure a kill onto Schottenklinge. But that's such a huge advantage going over to the Dynamic Dudes with only Onions and Tariki left alive. And now Dynamic Dudes are free to push in that middle lane. Such a huge steal coming in from Ruffy there. That's that's exactly what Dynamic Dudes needed. Exactly! As you said, that is what Dynamic Dudes needed. They needed to get that Baron. Now they can open up for the base. They can crack it open like it was a camp and take out the inside of it. They can take oh, off the hit as well. Killer is going to go down uh, from the XO. He has so much damage at this point. But they finally get an inhibitor. They now finally can move the pressure somewhere and, and and actually get some objectives but molly what oh onions hitting up molly molly's in a ton of trouble the huge shield though onions takes down molly in just a few hits counter strike means that he can't be hit but he's just gonna waltz away calmly ruffy now though caught up stunned with the brawn passive is gonna take down eventually unless he can tunnel over no Tariko takes him down Tariko is now godlike sitting at seven zero and nine and 350 cs at 40 minutes this is such a back and forth here between these two teams, and even with that advance for the Baron, uh, the only thing that Dynamic Dudes were able to take was uh, was a mid lane and an inhibitor, which is a non-negligible objective, but Onions and the rest of you Eliminator are going to be able to come right back. And Eliminator was a ticking time bomb, and now they have finally just came to the countdown. The countdown has ended, and now they are strong. And will win any full blown team fight 5v5. And I feel like with them being this strong, Baron will not be the death blow. It definitely not this time around. Not today, Satan. Say eliminated. Despite the steal, they do not care. They are going to keep pressuring this mid lane turret as Dark Ridge is sent up to the top lane. Uh, it looks like Shotkling is going to be sent to deal with them, and Alpha Strike is going to move him out of range, but it looks like he'll be going down eventually. Shingu, though, in a bit of trouble, he has to deal with, contest with five members of Eliminated, and he will be shut down. His second death of the game going over to Money for Fun. Definitely one of the champions on Eliminated's side, which needed that a little bit of help. Uh, it looks like, though, the bottom lane is receiving a ton of pressure. Onion still trying to escape a four-man contingent. He's going to get a little bit of help from Phantom Justice and Money for Fun, as well as Tarekia waiting in the mist. Killridge, though, goes in deep, and the light binding is going to stop Ruffy from going in. Phantom Justice now hitting up Kill Molly on the backside is not expecting the Spanish Inquisition in the form of onions, or rather, I should say, the Jaxish Inquisition. Uh, and Phantom Justice trying to get a few more stuns off. Tarekia is still waiting up on the side. No kills, but definitely a lot of pressure there lost on the side of Dynamic Dudes as they're still hoping that their bottom lane wave is going to come crashing into that inhibitor turret. And the goal lead doesn't matter anymore as both teams, they're getting so close to full build. Now, the Elder Dragon oh, is, this is another and dragon. Dynamic Dudes are on it. This is so huge, but it's also very risky as the rest of the Lemonades are coming here. And Jingo isn't there, he doesn't have a teleport. Shankling isn't there, well he is there now, sorry. Killer Ace is coming and this oh, is Fox health now. Dark Ridge could get there in time in order to steal it away. He does have the sun, he's gonna, he's gonna get over the, they get it. Dark Ridge manages to steal it away, but he'll go down immediately to Rexlight, but that's a huge advantage going over to the way of the uh, eliminated team. That was huge. That was, steal, uh, you know, Dark Ridge says, fool me once, Ruffy. You will not fool me twice, and the light binding definitely secures that uh, that elder dragon there for uh, for the for eliminated. This game has turned on its head. Dynamic dudes were not able to finish this game out in time, and now the, the countdown has just ended. They have given a late game scaling team composition the ability to come back into this game. To rake you, were able to turn this game so well. And for Dynamic Dudes, they just need one team fight, one good frozen tomb is all they need to win the game. <laughs> it's, it's going to be so hard because if you kill Dark Witch, then Onions to make you and no need for fun is going to come in. So you really need someone critical and you need someone out of position. But it's hard. At this point, Eliminated should just stick together. I mean, the other the other thing we have to point out is why, why isn't Dynamic Dudes, why aren't they just trying to group up in that top lane they have 
lanes pushing on two fronts right now. If they had transitioned over to that top lane, they could be putting applying more pressure and dividing the forces of eliminated. But instead, uh, they they're just running together, and I mean, there's no common objective that they can take all at once. I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, it seems that they're wasting their teleport advantage. They they definitely well. I'd say that it is a hard decision because at this point you don't want to to be a subject to being caught out. Oh, Enchanted Crystal Arrow! Oh, arrow. field goal once again for the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Shengdu, though, is going to get hit by the Braum Q once again. He now goes up. That's a three-man Braum ultimate. Oh, the Solar Flare, though, wants money for fun. That means that there's no damage coming out of him, but Onions is in the background. Molly goes down to the Terrakio plus um, Onions combo. Shunkling in a ton of trouble now. is forced as Onions, but he will be going down eventually to Dark Ridge and Onions. As this is the late game Jax as we know him best, as we know, as we fear him the most. And Terrakio gets his second kill and is now at sitting at 9-0 and 11. This is a huge game here for Terrakio. And this is what happens when you don't kill for your carries. You will lose the fight. You will get aced, and you will most likely also lose. Or maybe not lose the game as uh, minions are really pushing into the base of uh, Eliminated. They won't have any minions there to help them. And that just means that losing the game doesn't look like a possibility as Molly is also respawning in 15 seconds. Yeah, he'll be able to keep them at distance. Uh... And it looks like he eliminated my... They'll definitely get an inhibitor turret. Maybe an inhibitor, even. Um, uh, but, I mean, like you said, they were the eliminated... They're just playing their composition really well. They've waited for the late game, and that's all they needed to do, really. Uh, I mean, to be able to stay in this comfortably, despite their early, some early game mistakes. And, uh, I mean, really what needs to happen now is that uh, Leona, I mean, Killerich needs to be able to hit that Solar Flare on to more important targets than Money for Fun. Yes, Money for Fun does have that Enchanted Crystal Arrow, but uh, aside from that bit of CC, I mean, they need to be targeting Onions, they need to be targeting other champions uh, in order, and Terrakio, they need to be targeting him as well. But I mean, there's just so many threats that they have to deal with at the same time. It's going to be very difficult for them to to fix to f bring this one in. And the problem is that if you find a pick onto someone, and you just all go onto that person, you just all jump onto them. Then who's going to be dealing with onions and darkwoods? Because in that last fight, onions and darkwoods just went onto Molly and a shaman cling, and they were gone. There were no peeling. Because Shinku and Ruffy want to go on to Ash. But hang on a second, we might this see a final fight coming up. Very dangerous Baron here, and Toriyaki is off on the side. He's trying to use his Light Bindings to catch people out. Shingu is on the front line there, trying to do some damage. He's taking so much damage there from Toriyaki. He's just going so huge right now. Shot and Kling is trying to do what he can to keep that Jax at bay. He cannot do it, though. Double kill goes over to Money for Fun. Phantom Justice using the Unbreakable. Showing his will, Terrakio is now legendary, taking down uh, Molly for his 11th kill of the game. And we could very well be witnessing the last fight of this of game four, as Ruffy and Schottenklinger are both going to be going down underneath their tier two turret. And that's a that's an ace. Yeah, this Not is the game. The mid lane is pushing, and we're going to a game five, baby. Oh well, whenever they kill the towers, we are going to be going to a game five. But in the end. <laughs> Dynamic dudes, they had a good, they had a good early game, mid game. Then they just gave this, this late game team composition their way back into the game, and they ended up getting points for it. So a game five is what we're going to getting, and this is going to be the last game. Last game indeed. This is a, I mean, this is, like we said, we have a series on our hands. We're seeing both teams. I mean, coming back and forth, back and forth. This is the story of their uh, of their uh, matches uh, throughout the season. Um, we're gonna just briefly touch upon this game real quick. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, at the, at the damages throughout, and I mean, okay, I think we can phone this one in. Lux damage, total throughout the game. Delta Champions is just shy of 57k. That is massive damage. Yeah, the, the next closest to that was, um, was money for fun on Ash, with getting close to... 39k. So, I mean, I, I think we can say safely that Terekio were the one that, that really carried that game and were able to turtle it all the way to the victory.
Indeed he was. We're going to be taking a break real quick, but stay tuned for the very last game of Compete League's European Open League final. Uh, we'll be right back with Game 5 between Dynamic Dudes and Elimited. Stay tuned. <laughs> 